So welcome everyone. This is Women Who Code Python. We appreciate your time that you're giving us uh, today. We are just going to introduce a little bit about who we are and what we do. Our mission is a global nonprofit dedicated to inspire women to excel in technology careers. Our goal is to empower with the skills needed for professional achievement, educate companies to better promote and retain and hire tal talented women, build a global community where networking and mentorship is value, and develop role models and support this generation of engineers. Our code of conduct, we are an inclusive community and we are de de dedicated to provide experience for everyone who wants to participate and support our community, regardless of gender, identity, expression, orientation, anything. So you're always more than welcome to join us and share knowledge and grow with us. Women Who Co has different tracks online. We have a front end track, we have a blockchain, we have she's us, we have mobile, we have cloud, and we have also data science. We want to thank the sponsors. Without them, we couldn't be running this track. It's McKinsey Company, Python Software Foundation, The Home Depot, and Atlassian. Okay, so let's let's get into what, what we came here today to do. So we're gonna have today programming with Lambda, Map, and Filter, and Reducing Python. So Parul is right there. So before I get it to her, I wanna introduce her. Um, she's a data science evangelist as, at age two that AI. She combines data science, evangelist, and community service in her work. She's an active writer and a speaker and has contributed to publications like TDS, Analytics, Vidya, Kiddy Nuggets, and Data Camp. She also is the organizer of Women in Machine Learning and Data Science, chapter in Hyderabad chapter, and whose mission is to organize meetups, supporting and promoting women and gender minorities in data science, machine learning, and AI. So we're really, really excited to have you today. Thank you for joining us. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to you. Uh, so hello everybody and uh, welcome and thanks a lot for joining. Uh, I was seeing to the attendance list and some of them are pretty known names and for the others, uh, thank you. So just let's get back, uh, get on to the presentation. So just before I start, I would just like to set some expectations. Uh, so this is going to be a very basic and a very general presentation about use of Lambda map reduce and filter in Python. Maybe some of you are aware of it, uh, but for the ones who are not aware of it, uh, this is going to be some very useful tools and I'm sure you're going to enjoy the presentation. So uh, this is just, so it's a live hands-on presentation, but just to get some context, I'll be presenting a small PPT. So basically there are a lot of guidelines uh, when it comes to programming. And if you just go out and check out even in Wikipedia, there'll be a number of them. Uh, so object oriented programming is something that uh, we are made aware of when we start learning programming. But the fact is that there are some other uh, paradigms also. And functional programming is one such paradigm which is pretty useful, uh, even though a lot of us uh, are not aware of it. So it's been, it's a very nice quote that uh, there's this person called Michael Feathers has put on. So he says that object oriented programming makes code understandable by encapsulating moving parts and that we see how we create classes and objects. But functional programming on the other hand, it makes code understandable by minimizing those moving parts. So you kind of don't have to rely on classes and objects and all those stuff. So it just makes it pretty easy to call the functions in between. And you don't have to go through that whole process of, you know, kind of going into same flow, like you have to create class and then kind of call them that way. Uh, and that we'll see how is it done. So as per Wikipedia, functional programming is kind of a paradigm where uh, kind of, so this is a Wikipedia definition. So I just quoted from there, but what it essentially means is so these are those six parts of your uh, functional programming, which kind of encapsulates the whole meaning of it. Uh, the first thing is, important thing is it works with immutable data. So you cannot change your data, firstly. Uh, it has to be pure functions and 
it might seem a little uh, kind of uh, over the head right now, but you'll understand when I'll show you the example. Uh, all the functions are treated as first class citizens and uh, it has a lazy evaluation that is, it'll only work when you actually call that function. Otherwise, like you don't need to declare global kind of variables, global functions and stuff like that. So what this presentation is all about, it's about these, we'll go in this detail, kind of this table of contents. So we'll understand what's a lambda expression, what is a map function, filter, reduce, and then we'll come to a very nice concept of Lipschitz comprehensions. And why do we study, you need to study all this? Because if you understand all this, this is essentially what is functional, pro all, this is all you need to know about functional programming in Python. Okay. So let's get to coding. Just give me a second, I'll have to. So I'll be using a Jupyter notebook to actually show you the whole process because it makes it easier actually. What is actually lambda expression? So lambda expressions are actually uh, also called anonymous functions. And they're called anonymous functions because you can kind of call them anywhere in your program. And they help you to write a function kind of using just a single line of code as opposed to uh, the way you write with for and loops where you have to actually define everything. Uh, for instance, if you have to actually uh, write a function to actually calculate uh, maybe squares of some number. So how you write, you'll just write like define and maybe I'll give a name to this function, f of x. And what it does is it will actually calculate the, and uh, now I can just kind of return x and two. So this is my function. Now if I can put in anything like three, so this gives me nine, I can put in five and this will give me 25. But it appears we can do this by some other method also where we don't have to actually do all this stuff. We can just write a single line of code and it'll be done. So I'll define the anonymous function, which is called lambda function and I'll be using them uh, interchangeably. So I just have to write this Thing called lambda x such that and now you write what you want that x to do so I have to take the square of the number and you press enter now you do not get an answer what you result you don't get a result but what you get is this so this actually means that this lambda this is actually a keyword so if you have to actually get the result you just have to find a variable and now if I put G is equal to that function and if I press enter, uh, just do this. Uh, and then just like that, I'm just, I'll put any variable, maybe five and I get the result. So this is lambda is an anonymous function here and you've created this anonymous function. But then the best part is you can use a variable, you can store it in a variable, just like we store a kind of a number. So you can also store a function inside a variable. And then you can call this variable anywhere in the function. So this is the use and kind of like, what is the best part about Lambda functions. Now, this is, I've just used a single input. We can also uh, kind of have more than one inputs. We can use that. For instance, uh, let's see. Uh, for in so let's just calculate some mean of two numbers. And uh, so suppose we have, or maybe kind of three numbers. So again, you'll mention that keyword lambda. You'll mention your variables. Maybe it's uh, x. And what you have to do with them will be x plus plus z. And you'll divide, it, divide them by three. So 
So now you have a function which will uh, calculate the mean of three numbers and that is called mean three numbers. And now you simply put in your three numbers, whatever you want to, three and four, and this gives you the answer. So now this is more than one input. This was with just one input. Sometimes you, it's not even necessary that you actually have to uh, give an input. You can, uh, without you expression, without, so there can be instance where you have to work with uh, strings. So we can also do that. And here you don't even need to give it a name. So for instance, here we've given it a name, but there could be some places they don't need to give name also. You can directly plug it inside some uh, calculation or some expression, for instance. So I have a list of, uh, say, uh, the presidents of uh, USA, and I have a list of all those names. which I'll just copy from somewhere else. Okay, so this is the list I have. And this list basically contains some of the pre, uh, presidents of USA. I can promote this. Now, what if you have to sort this list uh, with the second names? So like, John Adams should come first, uh, then John Quincy Adams should come next. So we have to sort it with respect to their uh, last names and not the first names. Now, Lambda makes it very easy to do that. Uh, so what you will, what will be the whole procedure is you're going to take one name, you're going to split this name on this white space, then you're going to select the last name and you will convert all of them to lowercase. So that's going to be the process. So like, if I just show you, if I'll take the first one, it is George Washington. If I'll split it on white space, this splits it off. And then I'll select the second name. This will give me Washington. And if I could just convert to lower. So this converts into lower. So if we have all these second names in the lower form, then we can easily sort them. So in this case, what we can do is we could directly plug in uh, into So we'll just take this list, the name of the list itself. And we'll put in sort and you want to sort by what? Now we'll use this lambda expression. We'll take that name and for every name, we'll split that name first in white space. Then we'll take the last one and we'll convert them to your case. So this is a Oh, the thing is for sort, if you just check on shift tab, you'll see the way you write sort is you have to put in a key. So this should actually go for key. Here. Now, if I write this list, this gets sorted with respect to the last names. So here you'll see, uh, like I was giving name to all the functions. I just use this whole thing lambda expression and I just plugged it into the normal uh, kind of functions that you use for lists. So that is how you use it for uh, when you have to use lambda expressions without name. So this was for uh, kind of uh, if you had to convert it into if you have to sort it you can do all other things also you can just see if what is greater than what is smaller than or you have to pick up certain uh, maybe you have list of colors and you have to pick up certain colors which start with A or B or C. So all that thing you can easily do and then you just plug it inside this. 
So this is the first part of it and lambda expression is very useful. Uh, you don't have to write such big functions. Now, of course, there are certain functions where you need to write functions, but for you especially use lambda for things where uh, that function will not be used much. So for instance, you're writing a whole big uh, program and there's one function which has to just convert things to lowercase or uppercase. Okay, so why we need to convert into lowercase? Because when you have to apply the sort function, so sort is, uh, is a function for lists. So when you have to sort things, uh, it should treat all these letters in the same case. Otherwise it won't be able to, so it's kind of case sensitive. So otherwise it won't know whether, you know, it has to consider uh, if all of them will be small, then it will know. So A comes before B and B comes before C. If one is going to be in case and capital and small, so it won't be able to sort. So the sorting you do need to convert it into lowercase. But the president's last name is not. So should I take the questions right now? Yeah, they are saying why we need to convert them in lowercase. Oh, yeah. So, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> I just answer that, but the president last name is not converted to lowercase. Which one is not converted? Yeah, okay. no, I see. They I got it. Okay, so what happened is uh, the, the, the process by which it will sort is this. And after it just converts it, this just converts this existing list, it just sorts it. It will not change the contents of this, but the way it is sorting, it will use this condition for that. It will not touch the list. The list stays the same. It just gets sorted. But the way how will it get sorted is through this expression. Otherwise, it'll be very funny, right? You suppose you have some text, a lot of text and you have to change them. You apply this function and they just get changed to lowercase. That should not be the case. Your, your actual text should remain unaltered. So I hope that just did, did answer. Okay, cool. Yeah, any more questions? If it didn't change to lower, what will happen? I think you should try it because if you try it yourself, you will, you can even try it here. Leave, let's not just convert it. If you all is there any places okay first i won't convert it into lower okay let's just go one by one okay so it shows it's not changing so maybe it doesn't uh, okay oh the i've actually changed the list itself Okay, now this is the original list. Okay. Okay, so it shows it doesn't matter uh, if you don't change it. So that's good here, but uh, it's always good to convert it maybe. So just to take in all the cases into consideration for this, it doesn't matter. So you don't even, so if you don't want to lower case it, don't do it. But I have this philosophy whenever I work with text, I convert them into lowercase. Good. Uh, and thing, I think the best part of doing live coding is you can experiment over there only to see if it's working or not. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I think uh, there are no more questions. So if you have, just pop in there. Uh, I'll just go with the uh, map function now. So. So lambda is just to give you an overview. So what is lambda? Uh, let's just start with the map function. So map function is just as the name suggests, it's, it's called map. So it means you map something onto other. So for instance, if you've got a data like A1, A2, for instance, in a list or a tuple or a dictionary. Uh, so if you have the, these are different members of that list, also known as iterables. Uh, and you have a function and you have to apply that function to all the different elements. 
you can use a map function. And this is very useful because for instance, you have a list and you are supposed to, uh, for example, you have heights of people in one dimension, like in feet, and you have to convert those height into centimeters. Uh, what you can do is you can write a function and then you can use that map function to actually apply it onto each and every element of the triple. So that is the whole concept behind map function. Why I actually uh, told you about Lambda is that uh, sometimes you can write a quick function in Lambda and then you can use that function to actually pass it over to each element of the data. Okay. Let's see. I saw a question there. Now I can't see it. Yes, you can do. So that is what I told you. You can do everything with a for loop. Uh, it's your wish what you want to do. It's just that it is another. So for loop, it, it's another paradigm that if you want to use functional programming and if you want to use the map function, you can do that also. So there are many ways to just accomplish the same task. Uh, this is one of them. And this is sometimes it is useful when you don't want to write, uh, just want to accomplish something in just a single line of code. That's it. You can do it in for loop also. Cool. Okay. Yeah, using for we need to initiate. Okay, so he's answering actually. Yeah, so I think Veda answered what she's asking. Thank you. So uh, let's do the map function first. So we just saw the syntax of it. Okay. So I've opened another notebook because I don't want to actually do the whole, uh, write the whole uh, big calculations. Uh, so here, let's see how we can do that. For instance, uh, let me just write a function to calculate the volume of, uh, of maybe given the edge, so A, and then I'll just find the volume of a cube. So this is just a very simple function to actually calculate. So now we have a function that calculates the volume, right? So this function is volume A. Now, instead of one edge, I have a lot of edges. Maybe I have a list of edges like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have to calculate uh, the volume for all of them. Okay, so now here is a very uh, uh, great use of your math function is because if you were to use your uh, for loop, what you would have done is you would have first created a uh, empty list and uh, then you would have said for A in each of those uh, edges. Uh, so 
V is equal to. Then you would have used that function that is volume and you would have put in those A. Okay. Yeah. And then, so it's just to show you, I think what I give you is, and then you would append this uh, V. So this is this entire function to actually calculate uh, the volumes in the normal for loop files. And if you can just see, okay. So now you have this edges and we used a for loop to do that and it calculated the volume for each and every edge. And that's right. Now let's just do this. Uh, with the map function. So just, I to, just like I told you, we'll use map function. We'll put in the function that we have to map. So that was volume, this function. And we will give in the iterable, the list, the tuple, whatever we want to, and that's edges. So we just write edges. And now again, this is a map object. If we can just write list here, Uh, uh, uh. So this is volume and this is edges. So can you actually look at the error? Volumes. No, my function was only volume. So this is just my function was just volume. Oh, yes. I have to define, sorry. I think I did not enter that. I did write it first, but I just did not say shift enter. Oh, this I'm gonna copy. I actually so write the same thing as you and I didn't get the error. You didn't get the error. I'm also thinking why am I getting this error? Because yes. see, I ran this and I ran this. I have exactly the same. Yeah, I have exactly the same and I didn't get the error. Let me see what the people say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. I am able to, yeah. Wow. Did you, did you, can you rerun their lines maybe? I don't know, sometimes like I don't know. the beginning, maybe we run them. I don't know, sometimes. Oh, okay, maybe. That is very weird. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know I'm getting this run edges also. I ran, I ran edges also. <laughs> I know I'm getting the results and the people See? are trying, they're getting the results. It's good that people are getting the results. <laughs> okay, so if that's a problem, I go show you my pre-run uh, notebook actually, maybe. Uh, because it should not, uh, it shouldn't be of this. 
maybe. So I think I'll have to shift to a pre-run. Run. I, I run edges also, see? Or maybe I have to like uh, restart my Jupyter Notebook. So that is why I don't do it on Jupyter Notebooks. So see. So what do you usually do? What do you usually do? So I use Visual Studio Code and all, but then this is a pretty good environment to actually show. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, you're right. So the ones who are actually doing it, see if I copy this also. Somebody just put it here. See, I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting an error for this also. So, okay, forget this. Forget yeah, you this. might have to restart it. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe. should not ask for print because I actually ran this whole thing before actually starting it. Let me start. Let me even write a print. It shouldn't have asked for print actually. It's not working. There's some problem with the Jupyter notebook. Let me just start. So oh, this function works fine. Okay, this is my edges. And because since it's giving the correct, uh, yeah. Oh, now it works. So, Woo! That. <laughs> so it was Jupyter Notebooks. Always happens in demo with Jupyter Notebooks. It just. Thank you, Alena. No. This this is recorded, so you can check it in our channel later if if you want to. Check it out. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. So, so this is a problem of the Jupyter Notebook. So now what you see is, you see this line, uh, it's just a single line and it is just converted all of them into Q. And if we had to do the traditional for loop way, this was the way. So just this is just another way actually to uh, kind of reach on to the same conclusion. So that is what you do with map function. You just you, whenever you have to map a function to every element of an iterable, you use a map function. Uh, this is a very simple example. You won't uh, feel that this is a very important one, but I'll show you how you can do that. So this is the uh, it's, uh, kind of one that I was telling you. So if you have to convert a height from centimeter to feet, where one centimeter is 0 0.0328 feet, uh, you'll give, and you have this tuples, inside a list where you have a name and you have their heights. And for instance, for Tom, it's 183, for Daisy, it's 171 and so on. And now you have to convert every height into feet. But what you want it to return is the same way. You, have, you want to have a name and you want to have a height, but then this height should be in feet. So sometimes this appears to be a little complicated when you do the traditional for loop way. But this is very simple when you do it with the use of math function because then what you do is uh, you will just firstly create a function that will just convert this into feet. And for this, what you'll do is you're going to create a variable called lambda data. And for that, the first name should remain the same. So you'll just write like data zero. So that should be the same thing. For the second part, for the second part, the height, you will just convert that data and you'll multiply it by feet. So it's, it's simple like the way you convert centimeters to feet. And then you can just kind of map it to this list. So I'll just show you. So this is your list. And if I'll just write height in centimeters, you'll get this. And now if you convert this back, so I'll create a function maybe lambda x such that x zero. So x here means like this is like x1, this is like x2, this is x3 and so on. Uh, so x zero, which is, so this is x and just to make it more clear, if for instance, if this is x, And if I 
it at zero. It's Tom, and if I write x1, that's going to be the height. And I have to only pick up what is the height. So this should remain the same. What should change is the height and how the height should change. You have to uh, multiply it by the, this figure, which was the figure. Yeah, uh, this. Since I wanted to return a tuple, so I just put it inside a tuple and I have to multiply this by this. And because this is four places to decimal, I don't want heights to be to four places of decimal. I'll just put it inside the round function. So what the round function does is this takes an element and you just have to define how many decimal places you want. You can say one or two, whatever. So I just want one. So this is your function. And now you can just use this function on height in feet will be equal to map the function, which is uh, this, maybe, and where is it? I'll just give this a name, maybe H. And you have to put in the name of the list that is height in centimeters. So this, so now it is converted all this height into feet. So since I said, I just wanted till one decimal place, if you have to put it till two decimal places, this would have given you two decimal places. So this is a pretty handy round function, which you can otherwise also use. How is a, uh, which is of, okay. Which one is more uh, faster map or lambda? So map function is basically using another function to apply to other functions. And map is very, very fast. So this function that I've created with the help of lambda, you could have created by any other means also. I've just created because of lambda because it just makes it easier, but you could have created with the normal, fu whichever function you have, you can use map function to apply that, irrespective of the fact, how do you make that function, create that function. Uh, how is the map function different from a zip function? So I cannot prefer as a zip function right now. You'll have to go and search on Google. Uh, yeah, I think Wade is writing. Yeah, so it just helps to combine, right? So when you have to combine two different lists. And I'll, you can also find more material. Map is just that's a name suggest. Just map this thing to different things. And this could have been, a, this is a list. It could be a tuple. It could have been anything else. Iterables that you could have used here. So that's your map function. I think this, this is, for me, uh, I normally use a lot of uh, Lambda. I use Lambda in daily function or daily routine. And another function that I use a lot is map. So if you start getting into the practice, I think you also find it pretty useful. Okay. So the next one that we have is uh, filter the function which I've not written here. So next function was filter. So filter also as the name suggests, it just helps you to filter uh, things from a list or a tuple which you don't want or which you want. So it's very simple. Okay. It's just as the name says, so the filter function will be written just like the syntax is same like the map function. You write a filter and you given the function and then you give an iterable. For instance, uh, it's a very simple thing is, you have a list with all the numbers and you just have to filter out those numbers which are greater than five. So again, you create a lambda function, very simple to create a lambda function and you just you know kind of write it with my list and this will take all the numbers that are greater than five. So it's just like, as the name suggests. Okay, uh, 
for instance you have this uh, list of countries name now a lot of times when you scrape data from internet you get uh, you do not get the kind of data that you want so it's like uh, you have uh, some missing values and such. so for instance you were scraping the names of the countries but then with those you also got these empty blank spaces and now you don't want them so one way would be uh, there, there are a lot of ways actually to do that so we could use a map function filter function to actually get, get rid of these values and again my uh, Jupyter notebook is actually it's kind of frozen i think i'll have to go with the pre-run thing only okay so you can just write filter and you can give uh, so this i've given the none command but what you can do is you can kind of write a lambda function so you can just write lambda x such that where x is not equal to this empty thing and what you get is all the countries which don't have a missing value so this is pretty straightforward the only difference is that you can write whichever uh, expression or whichever uh, condition that you have to put and it will just filter accordingly. The third function that comes in the series of functional programming is reduce. So the third one is reduce function. Now what is a reduce function and reduce is a very interesting function that way because the creator of reduce function actually uh, so the creator of python actually says that uh, you should only use reduce if you actually have to use it otherwise you should go with for loop only so there's a lot of controversy as to why you should not use reduce or use it i'm just showing you because you should know that how it works and then using and not using it is your own prerogative so what it does is, uh, and as of Python 3, it is no longer built in. So just the way you're calling map function and the way you call your filter function, you have to call it from func tools. And it's not directly callable. It has been moved to this another module that's called func tools. And uh, what it does is, it just reduces uh, a given list into just a single value. So for instance, uh, you have to compute the product of a list of integers using reduce function. You have this integers and you have to calculate the product of it. Now what you're going to do is, so what, how it works is, for instance, these are your five numbers, one, two, three, four, five. It will calculate the product in one and two and put it in this two. Then it will create, uh, calculate the product of two and three and so on. So that's six. Then it will calculate the product of six with four and then finally like this and it gets reduced to a single number that's 120 but the syntax remains the same just like your map and filter you just have to write reduce you put in that function and you pass in your list and you get the product uh, so a lot of people they don't actually suggest you to do this because you know uh, it's just that the uh, See, so I've written the above program can also be written in an explicit for loop and for clarity purpose, you know, so this function isn't that clear. Uh, so it's not even more Pythonic. Uh, so that way people suggest, but there exists a function called reduce. So it's great to know that there is something called reduce which exists. So these are these functions, a lambda expression, which is an anonymous function, which helps to create functions and you can use lambda with map you can use lambda with filter and you can also use lambda with reduce so this we saw how we can use them but there also exists another uh, tool in python which actually can make it possible to not use all those three so there's also a possibility that you don't need to use any of them if you use something called list comprehensions so list comprehensions are an alternative to map filter and reduce. And uh, what they do is they help you to define and create lists in Python uh, very easily. Because otherwise, if you have to create lists, you have to first uh, initialize an empty list and then you write your function, then you append to that those lists. What you can do with list comprehensions is just, just write one single line of code 
and you get a list. So let's see how we can do that. Let's say you have to uh, create a list of uh, e squares of even numbers. So what you do traditionally is you will create an empty list with even squares and then you'll write like for number in the range 1, 11. So this will take your numbers till uh, 0 to 10. And if number is divisible by 2, uh, then you just append the square of it. So that's the typical way in which you write. Now what you do is you break this thing into parts. Uh, this loop for loop, it goes here. This expression, the actual calc, uh, the condition that goes here, that's called a condition operator. This, this is the input sequence, the for thing. And what you actually have to do, you have to find the square or you have to find the cube or whatever, you just bring it here. So you kind of rearrange your for loop and what you get is a list comprehension. It's this. So it's the list comprehension is actually kind of rearrangement of the for loop, but you don't have to do it in th three steps. It just does everything in just a single step. And see, let's see how. I just, what I can do is, okay. So this is a list of squares of the first 10 numbers okay so this is what i told you and yes this is perfect this is the way we want now let's see we'll take this here we'll take this loop here and we'll take this condition here and again if you enter it you get the same result but this as compared to this is not only uh, simple to write, it's also straightforward. And uh, you don't have to put in a lot of indentations and remember all these stuff. So if you know how to write a for loop, you can just easily convert them into your list comprehension. And uh, this is just the way, uh, this is just a syntax of it. Uh, let's see how we can use them. Again, now let's see how we can accomplish the same task that we had done before using list comprehension alone. So the first thing that we did was we used a map function to convert the heights of some students into feet from centimeters. It's this. And when we used a map function, so first we did was we created a function, we created a lambda function first, and then we used that lambda function uh, inside the map function. Now let's see how we can get rid of everything. And we'll just uh, define a new list and what, how we'll be right is, uh, we'll say height, or you can take any variable that you want. I'm just writing height so that you know that you're talking about heights. So you take height zero, and you take the other element of this tuple, and you'll just multiply and then for height and height in centimeters. So this single line actually does everything that you had done before. And uh, this may be a little confusing right now, but if you just see, uh, it's very simple if you get in a habit of using list comprehensions. So what it is doing is it's selecting your variables and it does some calculations on your variables and then it just ends with a for loop. So for, so it should do all this calculation for every element in your list. So that is for height and, and this is the name of your list. And this is the variable that you've chosen. This is the variable, the same variable. Whatever you use here, you'll have to use here also. Next is uh, how we can use list comprehension uh, instead of the filter function. So this, this is also pretty straightforward. So you have a list of countries and uh, you have to only get those countries which uh, do not, so you have to get rid of the missing values. So what you'll do is again, you'll choose a variable. So here you've chosen country, you can choose like X also, like X for X in countries Asia, which is name of this list, if that variable is not equal to null value. So you get this. 
and if that variable was actually equal to null values so of course that doesn't make sense okay so this is the same thing that what filter function was doing but again you just do it with a single line and again you can also use with the reduce function so for instance you're given these numbers and you have to find the maximum number in a given list so first i'll select those numbers so x for x in this numbers and then i'll just take the max of it in this case me 956 so list comprehension what from this whole thing what we get is that list comprehension is actually something that you can be used but uh, even lambda and map function for situations you also require them i haven't used filter and reduce so reduce i don't use filter i haven't used much all the other tasks can be accomplished easily with list comprehensions uh, but map is also a useful function okay I don't know. If, uh, yeah, you'll get. I'll I'll send you the the Jupyter notebook. I don't and the slide also, right? There have been so many questions. Okay, so when the calculation happens, does every time memory is overridden? Okay, so I am not, so I don't, I'm not sure, but I think every calculation is not saved in the memory because otherwise if it were, it were taken, but then I'm not so sure, I'll have to check. Yeah, it is good, right, as you said, but then, uh, I don't know, sometimes it's just that it's not that verbose, uh, you cannot explain what's going on. Maybe if somebody wants to read your code, they won't understand what is actually going on. Uh, but yes, like you said, yes, it's good for summation and stuff like that. It just speeds up that process. If you do, do that with reduce, it definitely takes less time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you'll get the Jupyter Notebook also. But you're asking for a reduce function. Do you have this notebook in, in GitHub? Uh, yes, I have in GitHub. In fact, I'll tell you what I have is, uh, wait. Sure. Okay. So sure, because, material, because we, can also, we can also point it from ours to yours. So people yeah, can, you do can it from find that. it there so this too. Is, this is the GitHub repository uh, that I have, Elements of Functional Programming in Python. Uh, this has this, uh, complete notebook that what I've been doing here. So I have just touched about list comprehensions here because that was the agenda also. And, but otherwise there are two blogs that I've written on the same sub subject. So this is on uh, elements of functional programming in Python, which uses lambda map filter and reduce. So that's the first part of it. And this is pretty like extensive and has links also. And it has two parts and there's another part linked to it. So there was a question also there where I have explained because list comprehensions are so useful and kind of they uh, outshine all the other processes. So there's another one that's called comprehending the comprehensions and that actually has five types of comprehensions. So you have list comprehensions, you have nested list, set, dictionary, generator. So there's a doubt or a question on dictionary comprehensions. So that also I have explained here. And then more examples also. So this is the dictionary comprehension. It's just like you just put these curly braces before and you have a key value pair and how you use and then you also have generated expressions. So, so these are with references also. So if you want to follow along the blog, you can follow that. And then you can go to GitHub also and you can run that code also, which works. Uh, and every time I miss those questions, I don't know why. So I think if you want to uh, just go uh, at your own pace and you want to read, so 
I'll send it to you, Liliana, and you can just share with them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we will share it and, and we can add it to our GitHub as well to point it directly. Yeah, yeah. And the GitHub link is also put in those and this is the GitHub link maybe. So if you want okay. to just go and do it at your own pace, that will be useful. Why can't I? Okay, these are the questions. Perfect. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. So just, so this is obviously just a one hour session. You cannot tell everything, but I hope you, you know what it is and then you can look up, you can read these blogs and read the repository in the code and then go back and try applying these uh, that'll be the best way to actually get a hold on these concepts yeah totally thank you everyone for attending and yeah. just want to i just wanted to remind that you can get involved with us if if you're interested we we're always looking for people to help to grow our community and our site is women who call that com slash python and you can as well join the conversation. We all we have Twitter, we have um, Instagram, we are on LinkedIn as well, and we'll we we'll post information there. And we also have a Slack channel. So if you are interested to to join the Slack channel as well, you can you can join us. Thank you very much, Paru, for help for for joining us today uh, and, and so for much. sharing all that information.